Hello and welcome to another ACD chapter discussion. Today we'll be talking about uh, Harass part 2 and 3. So uh, we we'll start with the impressions. Ezeron, can you start with the impressions? Of course. I for me it was an it was a clear 10 out of 10 chapter. It was just mega awesome. Uh I can't I don't even where where to start. You you get the whole My Hero Academia uh introduction of how to from the best trainers in the whole continent, probably in the whole world in world or whole of in world. Um you get the politics there, how they do that, you get uh the, the training methods. Uh you have the horns in more and more hilarious situations. We they they already mentioned it that Nias tried something similar when they when when Nias was like on uh, on bird and uh, he he forced everybody to run until they leveled, and now we saw the real version of that. And. What I the only gripe I have with this chapter that Teresa is probably gonna be turned into a character who's not just gonna die, but be useful and like maybe even likable. <laughs> um, and yeah, Teresa was just you. I'm starting to like her, and I don't like that. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, the duel with the hero was awesome. Um, the end was awesome. It was just all in all amazing. I agree, and actually, I agree about Teresa because I thought I will hate. I, I'm not saying I'm gonna hate the chapter, but I will lower. I I had thought I'd like to lower my ratings. But no, it's a 10 out of 10 chapter because Therese is actually a character now. Yeah. She's not, she's not uh, just something like... Somebody uh, who should die to make Trey better. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I, I did like it. And actually, um, um, I liked... I liked, like... Um, I liked uh, the, the hero part. You know, uh, what's his name? Uh, doubt. Uh, mm-hmm. I I liked his uh, you know the the part about his family and how he he's trying to protect his children and by protecting his children he almost ruined them. Uh, so uh, so uh, yeah, I mean uh, it was uh, it was such a great chapter. I also liked like the different kind of uh, training, uh, uh, you know, uh, and it was short. It's not like uh, this long training montage. But it was uh-huh. like short and to the point. I liked like uh-huh. uh, Pisces learning few uh, spells about death and uh, how Ivan running uh, and uh, training and Syria and stuff. I don't know what Colt had got out of it besides like monitoring and stealing some info, probably. And I really, really like that Elena joined the horns. It's uh, like a big plus for me because, uh, you know, she's uh, like the best publicist around. True. So, uh, yeah. So my impressions is like uh, ten out of ten chapter. Uh, though I, to be quite frank, I would liked if like Pisces has reunited with Mer at the end of the chapter. I will uh, get that the next one. Yeah, I know. But when is that will be? So uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and to to Kolf, he just learned how to train other people better. He's already yeah. good at everything, and now he learns how to can how he can teach other people to be good at everything to support them even better. I think. Yeah. I just I I'm wondering how come Colt couldn't can uh, couldn't do the same thing that Ivan did. I mean, if Therese could do it, it Colt should should have definitely done it. But uh, yeah, Bec- I, I think it's because it's a general because Colt is a generalist. He is master of everything. He is. Uh, good at everything master of none you know he's just good and the thing that Yvlon and uh the not death flag Teresa now 
did there is a highly specialized warrior thing, I think. It's not something that anybody can do, you know? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, we'll go to some comments. Um, Side Hammer, he says, completely delightful pair of chapters. Love them. This reminded me of why I became hooked on the series in the first place. Uh-huh. Uh, Kinia says, awesome chapters. A lot of things happening. We finally get a lot of Therese development. And also, most of the horns, a bit of a shame that not too much happened with Trey, but everything was left in a very interesting wait for the future. Mr. Wiggles, you have the, you have the floor. As these chapters, absolutely love them. 9 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10, actually. Um, I think my absolute favorite scene for the chapter was Pisces falling from the carpet and being a rainbow oh, that, yes. that was that was such a powerful scene it was just amazing i absolutely mm-hmm. loved it um otherwise seeing um syria finally get to level 40 finally kind of like put uh just get the circlet on her side basically like she's it seems like she's fully incorporating it into her being now which is really interesting and we got her transformed into a boreal elf, a half elf. By the is... way, b- by the way, there was somebody really handsome and knowledgeable uh, already said it before that she is gonna involve this into her character path. Like Erin uh, made the door her own. I, I, yeah. I, I, I forgot who said that, but he's handsome. He is knowledgeable and. You know? I don't think he's that handsome. He kind of he, he he might be. <laughs> yeah. Eh. Um, I, anyways, anyways, I, I I just I I love this chapter. It was amazing. I mm-hmm. yeah, it, it is just it's it's awesome. Good job, Pirate Up. Great job, actually. A plus, A plus. And that's it. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Mystical Pie says definitely enjoyed this set of chapters and I'm glad the horns aren't actually gonna be in Ras for four weeks. Nice to see some Therese development, but I still don't like her. Welcome <laughs> to the club. Dito. Uh, Red and Quill, you're on. Yeah, I love this chapter. I thought it was wonderful. Um, I love the uh, race pedagogia. I love the mentorship. I love like the younger mentor that was like getting stepped on by the the head mentor like when she was trying to do the the scrying orb i like how she was like suppressing her that was hilarious um Mm -hmm. that that was probably my favorite part of the chapter uh, besides, like, maybe Pisces jumping off. Like, he's like, wait, why am I falling? <laughs> that, was, that was really funny. Um, but I, I, I love how they could really train people to surpass the limits of their minds and just access the strengths of their bodies, maybe even to their detriment. I thought that was, like, really cool. Because that's, like, a real thing, you know? Like, mothers can lift cars off of their children. Um, in the moment, you know, it's like, it's pretty crazy. Uh, So I just, I I really like everything. I like how Doubt is a mind reader. That that makes, that makes the the conversation he was having with pedagogia, like make, make more sense because uh, Ah, it seems seems like he was like responding to stuff she was thinking rather than what she was saying. Um, So we'll never know exactly what she was thinking that he was responding to. But I really, oh, I also really liked the the thoughts of the horns of Hammerhead. Colvin's <laughs> <laughs> an answering machine in his head. <laughs> yeah. That ends with, that is with, uh, Colf is not here, here right now. Please wait and get ready to die. <laughs> oh my god, I was dying of laughter. Yeah, that and, then, and then Pisces doxes the necromancer <laughs> again. <laughs> oh my god. That was so funny. But uh, wonderful chapter. I loved it. Like I'm, I was so happy that it was two chapters instead of just one. I know like uh, Paradaba is like doing one chapter a week, but it was wonderful to have two chapters this week. Really liked was- it. I also liked Syria's response. 
I ate my own oh, shit yeah. to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was so funny. She's like having a conversation with her circlet. So that should mean she's always talking to the circlet. And then, um, and then she like she uh, she starts like having like these jokes. She's even a prankster in her thoughts. It's like really funny. Uh, wonderful. Yeah. Ederon, can you p- any other impressions? If uh, not, we can uh, start with the first uh, question. Ederon, mm-hmm. can you please post it? Of course. Wait a second. Question. Shit. Shit. you read it out loud? Yes. Uh, first question. Who of the horns will be the hero? Is it the obvious choice Pisces or is Pirate trolling us? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's obviously Pisces is now hinted at that the uh the the trainer lady looked at him the most he did the heroic thing at the end with the rainbow he's obviously gonna be set up as as the hero but it's pirate ever we're talking about and my first thought is when they said one of the horns of femora that means it doesn't even especially has somebody to be who is right now there i i obviously thought of kissinger and yeah, you know, now the horns even have a new member. Uh Pisces is the obvious choice, but Pirate Abba is known for uh throwing monkey wrenches and anybody who tries to uh predict TWI. Elena will be the hero. Come on. Oh really? <laughs> Yeah, I mean the hero, the hero of beauty and uh, and media. <laughs> um, I think a PR manager is a good thing, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Fabian says fantastic chapters, nine point five out of ten. I would have loved to see pirate level low, Pisces level low. Uh, oh. Myst- Mystical Pi says it feels like it should be Pisces, but pirate has been. Bludgeoning us with descriptions of Pisces being heroic, so I'm not sure. Fofia would definitely be interesting, but she's outside the system, so I honestly have no idea. Dart Time mm-hmm. says, Rockerton will be the hero. Either them or the circlet. Mr. Wiggles, you have the word. You have the floor. So I, I do have to agree with the thought that Mystical Pie expressed that, like, I do think that right now, Pisces is the obvious, obvious, obvious choice, which is mm-hmm. why it's like a pirate has to be like playing a trick on us. But I've been wrong about this kind of thing in the past. You know, Pirate Eva once spent like two volumes not talking about what race um, the Death of Wings was just to say, oh, they're a harpy eventually. Like, like <laughs> they were hiding the fact that it was the most obvious choice in the world. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. And they just kept hiding it over and over, and so it's like, it's just, it, it can't be a heartbeat. But it was a heartbeat. So at the same time, Pisces is the obvious choice. Pisces is the one that fits everything. Mm-hmm. The the only, like, twist on it I can think of right now is the whole team is going to get hero classes. Oh like the, my god. The entire team is going to get a collective hero class. Oh my uh, goodness! What would would he being called Bena Froshal? Like, a, is that like a prophecy? Um, I you, think you, it you, could be considered one. Yeah. Yes. It's like, um, the the thing with the Horatians is they they know that you can make prophecies to make heroes, but they also have to be able to make the prophecies themselves in order to mm-hmm. make heroes. You know. They they can't just know the secret. They have to be able to make the prophecy. So I think that's part of why they're going with them. But does anyone can make can anyone make a prophecy? That's the issue. 
So uh, if uh, somebody like in the middle of nowhere made a prophecy about someone else being a hero, would that someone become a hero? I mean, mm. like the, the Empire of Sand is, uh, has already made one hero. Question. Yes. Um, you so... probably need the right class for that. Maybe some the the Sia class that we saw some two people have right now, or that we saw where you can like see in the future or alternate future uh, things. Maybe those people can make those predictions. I don't know. Yeah, uh, prophecies. Probably. probably. Uh, as Ahelas says. Actually, that would make a lot of sense to have Elena become the hero and counter Roshal PR. Uh, Kinias <laughs> says, maybe they find a, a path akin to a hero in the cheating part, but unique for them. Red Inkwill, you have the floor. Yeah, I think that <clears throat> Pisces is what has been set up, but I think it's probably Kissinger, because he was Kissinger mm. of Chandrar before. Like, a Chandrar loved Kissinger, and Kissinger was doing heroic shit from, like, the get-go. He fought the bandits to save people. He saved the, the, the queen of uh, the, 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 the captured queen. Like, he's been, do he's been doing, like, he's been saving people. He's been doing all this stuff, which is, like, really heroic. And he has the story in the, the, he doesn't need like a specific, um, he doesn't need a, like a specific prophecy because the prophecy was already one of the horns of Hamrod will be, will grow into the hero class. He's also the lowest level horns of Hamrod besides, um, Vopia, which doesn't take levels. So he would be able to grow his hero's class better into his build because uh, he's only like level 34, I think, or something. So that's that's my reasoning. Uh, that's why I think it's going to be Kissinger. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't even at the, the Heroes of Race uh, training camp. So that's what I think. For a horrible, ho really, really horrible second, I thought Teresa is going to join the Horns and is going to become the hero <laughs> because Syria offered her the job. And I thought, oh my God, she is going to join and she's become the hero. Because uh, they said she couldn't become the hero, and then she launched the horns, and somebody from the horns is. And I am so glad she turned them down. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. She has to die in the new lands. Ah, uh, come on. She could have like a great <laughs> character arc. And die heroically? She can become a hero and die heroically. Yes, uh, that's her job. <laughs> Superbred Ninja says heroic sipping. Also remember, Shastriel is the best is best friends with friend with the prophet with prophecy. Side Hammer says, learning what we did about uh, what we did about hero, I no longer want any of them to have to become one. Brack Giraffe says, Elena here to save the world from harass bad plays and boring talk shows. True. <laughs> Mr. Wiggles says, Pisces is already in pain. Might as well get the hero class as a recompense. Any more uh, thoughts about question number one? Or we can move on to question number two. Edaran, can you please find the question number two? Uh, all right. Then I just uh, take the second of question. Yes, so the question is, do you like Elena joining the horns? Hmm. Uh, I would say I love it. I really do. I think uh, it's like... Uh, well, it was surprising, to be quite frank, that uh, I know she wanted to go with them, but I didn't know if she wanted to join them. Uh, so it's uh, it's actually like... Uh, I don't know, it's, it's, she's unique in, in a sense... Like, she's not a fighter, or uh, she can contribute in other ways. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy to see what she can contribute with. She's, an, she's a perfect type of an auxiliary. Just uh, 
somebody who is not in the front line, but is still an integral part of of a team. I mean, at first, even um, Evelon thought, yeah, why why join an adventurer team? Are you really useful? And then she turned out to be useful. And having, I mean, first of all, maybe I thought a group needs a face, but they have already Kolf as a face. But she and he, when they work together, I think uh, no matter no matter where the horns go, there will be um, there will will leave a good impression because. When those two can work together to prop up the horns, they are they are on the not even uh, from the power from the power they're on their way to be named ranked, but now from the publicity side they have even another uh, thing speaking for them with Elena to make them named rank. Yeah. Uh, Dark Time says the horns are pulling to Paris. Next thing you know, they run into a siege. Mystical Pie says I think it's really interesting decision that I'm looking forward to. I think it'll be really interesting to see how a non-combatant class can play into their dynamic and how she only be on the team temporarily since she's trying to get back to Kara. I think her main role will be keeping up their appearances, which plays into the hero's plot. Uh. Dark Time uh, quotes Aaron Vanwell stared at the young woman from Earth, Elena, whose name was Greek, descended from the root name Helen, as in Helen of Troy, no relations, was fulfilling her plate from the buffet. They kidnapped someone named Elena from a dude named Troy. Okay, so maybe Dark Time implies that she's gonna be the hero. Mr. Wiggles, you have the floor. So, I, I think that First off, her joining the horns is awesome. It, it's definitely she's like the first real supporter. Support, I, I okay. Support is the correct word because cult <laughs> is support. But it's like he uh, Elna is the first backline support, like not in the thick of things support. You know what I mean? She's mm. non-combatant com- support, and that's really interesting. Uh, we haven't really seen that with any other adventuring groups but it, it, it can help a ton and it's just like I, I i love that kind of development and it'll be really fascinating to see how she kind of blends in and how she goes crazy with the rest of the horns and how she um you know gives them buffs and stuff you know like mm. what benefits she brings and it, it, it's just it's awesome but I think we're forgetting that Nawal also is along the ride with them, along with the Horatians. The Horatians are going to be there for a while, and so is Nawal. Oh. I, I, and I really think Nawal could find her place among the horns, too. Like, Nawal is someone who has lost a lot right now and who doesn't know what to do with herself. And the horns... I, I think they could really easily pick up on that and really give her a good place to stay. And I, I'm Death absolutely looking myth. forward to it. What'd you say, Andrew? A personal smith in the horns. <laughs> yes, it would be amazing. I would love to see it. Love to see it. Especially because, as she's commented so many times, Yvlon's arms suck. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously no one should fix that for her. Mm-hmm. Obviously. All right, and that, she has it. to hook up with Pisces. Actually, um, that's... no. Um, no. That's a good point about Noel. Actually, I really like uh, that she went with the horns. I mean, she was going nowhere with Floss, and her plot was like dead in the water. Her character. So I'm glad uh, she's getting like fresh air and new experience. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and I think she will upgrade uh, Evelyn's metal in yeah. one, some way or other. I hope so. Yeah. All right, that's it. Thank you. 
Kenya says it makes sense and I like it. I would have been it would have been difficult to continue her story if she was left behind and I'm looking forward to her development developing bonds with them. Samu, you have the floor. Yeah, so I generally like it as well. I'm just a little bit annoyed that um, the horns now have an entourage, basically, and they are traveling with like uh, no eight more people. And I'm like, is that still an adventuring team, or are they like nobles traveling around like in the Middle Ages? And yeah, that's I'm I'm not sure if that. It's. I. I would like to see the horns go hard and fast in some some places and traveling fast around fast. And I'm mm-hmm. not like with the group. That's with this group. It could still work because the mentors are able to keep up as uh, is Elena and probably Naval as well. But yeah, there's a limit to how many people there should be around for it to be a um an adventuring team and not basically a small army or like yeah if, if um, i recall correctly there is an adventurer team comprised of like 100 people who together are a gold rank team not uh, individually exactly. but together they are a gold rank team which is which is my point exactly they are not an adventuring team they are an adventuring army and I'm like, and especially, I mean, the the biggest problem with this is that it's kind kind of this two plus system. Like we have the horns itself, the the four members around, and then we have people who are really just dedicated support, not battle support, but just dedicated support. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a little bit on the fence on this one because uh, at mm. some point I think the Horns have to emancipate themselves from this entourage again, maybe. Or the entourage has to be uh, able to keep up in places like the crossroads, for example, because taking Elena into the crossroads wouldn't be possible. In Chandra, that it's probably fine. They are going to be around in civilization, more or less. But uh-huh. you need people you need to be able to take people in those places if they want to stay with you and i i'm looking forward to see that develop positively i guess but um yeah i that's what i need from the entourage at some point that they are able to keep up with them in those places yeah but i but think don't don't I forget think... that Ele- don't forget that elena got the basic fitness training with the level of uh Soldier of Rear and all play. That's it. What what kind of standard is the most of elite warrior in the in world? Is just a standard for basic training. What's wrong with these people? Yeah, but I mean, I mean, like also they need an army to fight Rochal. You know, they're not. Uh, they are going. You know, the end game is like the destruction of Rochal, <coughs> and I and uh, you know the horns gonna need all the allies they can gather. I think it's a prelude between them and the rebels and all of the others, it's a prelude to uh, Rashala's destruction. Uh, Red Ink Quill, you have the word, you have the floor? I love Elena joining. I love, I really liked her ever since we met her in the other story, the uh, Grave Song story, where Kara met her. Um, I really think that an entourage is what's going to happen anyway when they meet up with Mayor and the Rebels. There's already going to be an entourage. And these aren't like hangers on that are just trying to get money or wealth. Like we have a level 30 plus beautician, which can like buff people with their skills. And then we have like four or five trainers that are like really good at training and supporting and like moving around. Like they'll be able to keep up, I think. Like we saw during the during the battle, Elena was really good at relaying their activities to the scrying like the scrying TV show. Like she took it from forget her name, it starts with a D. She took it from her and did it correctly and then like shot Yeah, Duressi or something, the message drew. Um, I don't know. Uh, she took the scrying stone and then 
Rochelle thought she, she was the real threat, not the rest of the horns of Hermorad. She was a real threat, saying the only good slaver is a good is a dead slaver, like saying stuff like that. She had a lot of like good one liners that are like earworms. Um, I think it's really important. And then the rest of the mentorship were like firing like rains of arrows down, you know. Mm-hmm. So like they were they were definitely keeping up, you know. Maybe they're not in the thick of things, fighting like five to like a hundred, but they're they're still they're still able to support from a distance. And I think that's really important. And when they meet up with Mare and uh, the rest of the rebels, they're going to have an entourage anyway. There's no question about it. So that's what I think about it. Yes, I agree with the entourage. I mean, he's going to meet up with Mare and the others, so they're going to be a mini army. Oh, I can't wait. Uh... As Ahale says, they're all over level 30. However, every one of them is higher level than Toadie in his Toadie's Elite. <laughs> <laughs> and right. there's the obligatory Toadie bashing again. Poor Toadie. Uh, Brack Giraffe says, a mercenary company as opposed to an adventuring team. I'm not opposed to them growing. This is building to something, and I want to see it. Uh, Geiger says when they gave the horns for weeks of training i knew it it wouldn't pan out it was just too likely they would harass right out of <laughs> out of there uh race yeah race uh mystical pie he sa- uh, says uh, i would say the hero makers are straight up hanger one ons they're literally tied their fortune to the horns yeah that's true that's actually stated because they uh, they have to you know to follow the prophecy in case they become heroes or not. Uh, more questions, Ederon? Yes. <clears throat> I also forgot to mention one part. I loved how Syria finally got her revenge on Floss, or how she did it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just laughing again. That's my revenge. Just steal one of his most valuable... Uh, 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 follow us. Just convince her to leave him. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. oh, Syria is the best. Also, I I really liked uh, like uh, Gazi says, "Oh no, please don't!" And she turns <laughs> around and walks away. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was funny. All uh, right, never mind. The... Yeah, I, I will I will ask the question. Uh, the mm-hmm. question is, how will Therese develop away from Floss and the others? Yeah. She is going to develop, all right, into a box with a big cross on top of that, and that box will be lowered into the ground slowly, slowly. No, she is going to be... She's going to come to the new world. She is probably at some point going to meet the Silver Swords and meet up with them. Maybe she will finally get... uh, I think she's gonna end up with the silver swords and with your loss, maybe even that's ooh, now that I think about it, she's gonna throw herself on your loss. But yeah, she is heading to the new lands and uh there she will she will have her moments and Pirate is building her up to be a real character now. And not just a rage filled thing. Yeah. She might either meet Kilkevich or Torin in the New Land. That will be funny oh. to see. Uh, now that you are saying it, yeah. It will be actually. It will be educational for her actually to meet them. Like uh, meeting some other uh, races will mm-hmm. uh, undead. Uh, Mr. Wiggles, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Yes. I yes. Um. So, I this this is this is probably Teresa's biggest character moment in forever. Actually, Teresa has always been you know Blech. in the background of the Flash chapters, and she's never gotten really a moment. The biggest moment she's had before now, I think, is when she was pre- protecting Dawal while Nawal was making the blade during the war um, in Rhyme. 
So I think it, this is excellent. It, it's excellent to just see her get her own moment. And um, I really hope it leads to just uh, Teresa becoming you know, her own brand of crazy, her own brand of person that's more than just a hanger on, you know? Um, yeah, I, I'm i really looking forward to it. And it sets up more of the New Lands. We've gotten a lot of more set up for the New Lands now. Mm-hmm. We are getting people going there constantly. So it, it's really going to be interesting to see uh, where they're taking it and if it's going to happen more in this volume or more next volume. But yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this development. It was great. I already prepared the coffin dance. <laughs> uh, Geiger says, I've always hated Teresa, but I must say this chapter changed my mind. Now I slightly hate her. Hate her. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know the feeling. It's one-to-one what I wrote, Mr. Wiggles. <laughs> <laughs> Brack, Brack Giraffe says, she's totally gonna going to end on rear somehow. She wants to become and make a difference, and that's the biggest difference to make. They will hook her right in with one easy recruiting pitch. Well, actually, yes. I mean, she's so uh, she's so upset about she's so uh, she wants she so wants to make a difference, and st- so she could be sold anything. To be quite frank, uh, Kinias says I agree that it's probable that she will end with the silver sword. It seems a good and interesting place for her. It could also be interesting if she end up. And ended up with Thorin. Uh, Mystical Pi says, I think Pirate did a good job fleshing out her motivation and making her character less one note. The New Lens will definitely be a good place for her to actually face adversity and grow into her own person. Unlike uh, Geiger, though, I think I dislike her more after this chapter. <laughs> Uh, Geiger said, "Teresa and the New Land, Silver Swords or Torin? Maybe she hangs with the Silver with the Red Fangs, and her and Fighty Pilota would be a great team. Her and Fighty Pilota would be great. Team. Red Ink Will, you have the floor. I think we're going to see a lot of interesting things in the New Lands. I know a lot of people didn't like the chapter of Laws starving in the New Lands, but I actually really loved it." And we saw that uh, Saria told her that all magic fails and you can't grow anything. And she'll probably remember that when she gets there. Like she'll she'll have an inkling of like what's happening, and that'll that'll make that'll be like a little a little prankster's joke will make a huge difference. Um, I want to kind of see some crossover stuff in New Lands, like because there's so many different actors there. There's there's like the there's the drown folk, there's the half elves, there's laws, there's like all the small things. There's also that um that Reinhardt that's like a schemer that won the chess tournament, he sent people down there as well. So there's just like people from all over and now Floss is coming a month along with like everyone else. It's gonna be crazy over there and I'm just excited to see what's gonna happen. Um, I never really disliked Teresa. I just thought she was mid. She's like a mid character. She's a mid class. Like even for level thirty, I've seen stronger level thirties in Gravesong. You know, the hunters when they reach level thirty are way stronger than Teresa is. Um, but I thought it was cool how she could cut the breeze for a little bit. That was really that was really um, cool. Uh, and I, I liked how she she was hitting on Pisces and like she kept on failing because he's like so rock headed. Um, that was funny. <laughs> and then Pisces had to get training from like a hundred beautiful women, and he like left rubbing um, lipstick off his cheeks. That was cute. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I, I, I'm excited because Teresa seems more real now. She seems more powerful. She has the ability to unlock her mind and do crazy things with our body. And I think that'll be really interesting. All right. Um, any more uh, thoughts about that? 
about Teresa? Apparently not. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, should we, Ederon, should we take the Syria question about the right. subclass? I'm gonna post it. So uh, the question is, how will Syria's subclass and race play in the future development of, of Syria? Hmm. Yeah, she finally integrated the circlet into her skill path. Now it's really part of her and not just an accessory. And how will that develop? Hmm. I mean... I mean would Syria become like a frost fairy because she's uh, she's getting uh, more icy and uh, and according to Tsiri, she's uh, she says like uh, it will change you forever like fundamental change mm -hmm. and now she has the skill to summon the frost behemoth when i yeah. recall correctly she could do that before she, couldn't she summon like two of them at once at some point I think she could summon uh, ice element, uh, ice elementals, but uh, I I think sure. on the on the in one battle she summoned two frost elementals by herself. Wasn't there something? Or maybe I I remembering that wrong, but uh, can't remember. A frost metal behemoth. But uh, now she can do that as as a skill. That yep. seems kind of broken, but she's level forty now, and yeah. There's a bit of power creep right now in TWI that even like yeah. level forty characters behave more like level fifty characters. Well, but... I, I I think now with the system being more cognizant and stuff, and you know the old uh, world stop uh, the world stop being waning, so the classes will mean more I think from now on than before. Mm -hmm. Uh, as as far as uh, Syria's integration with Circlet, I'm not a big fan, to be quite frank. I thought uh, it will be a great opportunity for Syria to just uh, not ditch the Circlet, but uh, integrate her in a way other than you know becoming one with it. I mean, I know like the end game will kind of be like full consumption, but I'm not a fan of that. I mean, like she could, uh, she should. I mean, like learn all that you can from circle it and then uh and then you know try uh, to yeah or something uh yeah uh all I, right so i i see what you mean but i personally i think it's kind of cool again like erin integrated the door into her skill path she made that thing she used it it was so important for her that she made it her own, and now with the circle, it's the same. Yeah, I but, think... but, but circle has a mind of its own. So consider this, if Syria is like weakened or uh, or something, so the circlet can easily control her or uh, or take over or whatever. Not you know, anymore, she... I think. I, I, I... Oh, sorry. She still has like, like she still has like free of uh, of conscience or free of something. I can't remember what. Yeah, so uh, I'm not really sure because it really it changes Syria's perspective. You know, she becomes colder, less passionate, less empathetic, less everything. I uh, I think it's the opposite. Now that that the circle is part of her, uh, in a few levels, she probably doesn't even need the physical artifact anymore and just has the circle as as uh, as her own thing. Just has an extra mind or or something as a skill, like I don't know, uh, a rigger having an AI as an assistant and making it really, it's 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 part of her brain now. It's part of her, yeah. And I think that's kind of cool, to be honest. I don't know. Yes. Well, I mean. We can have different opinions. It's okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Dart Time uh, says she real she really internalized Skinner's feet effect and uh, condition 
uh, dark time quotes condition feet nature's passage snow obtained she got cold feet <laughs> Oh. Hey, uh, uh, Mystical Pie says this is probably my least favorite, most foreboding part of this chapter. Right before her level up, Siri said doing do uh, going down the path of elementis elementalist causes irrevocable change changes. In regards to her race change, I'm not really a fan of their sub races within Half Elf. I always thought that was a Litherfall Goblin exclusive thing. I also don't like her becoming relic bound. But that's less of a complaint with the story and more of a complaint with Sira's choices. The portrait one at 12 didn't subjugate the circlet. I have a hard time believing Sir Syria will. Dark Time says Boreal because she's worth. It. Oh my god. Samu, you have the, <laughs> you have the floor. Um, yeah, so I think it, it won't matter that much in the long run because. There is going to be a moment where Sarah is going to uh, meet Saria, and uh, Sarah will right everything wrong with Saria's class in the long run, I would say. Or at least I would be really sad if they don't meet up. And uh, yeah, whatever happens there, I don't think the, the circlet will be a long term problem here. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty positive about all of it and that Syria finally managed to, to get her level 40 um, class. And I'm like, yeah, I think it also fits to her to be so driven and to not care about those changes that much. She's not like, a, she's not like this ice-cold green that her former mentor, the, the name eludes me right now, was. Uh, but she's like more a fun ice mage, and I think it it fits to her that she's just following that path. And when Sarah and she's she are gonna meet up, then we will uh, see it change again at some point, or at least that will be um, she, Sarah will keep Syria from making too bad choices. So I'm like really chill with all of that going on now because. We know we will get Sarah's commentary all the way now, I guess. So, uh, and until they meet, nothing too bad is gonna happen. That's my feeling, at least. All right. Thank you for that, Samu. Uh, Mr. Wiggles. I'm mostly excited for her class. Like, uh, I know some people have been saying they have reservations about like. Uh, Syria uh, kind of getting more under the influence of the circlet. But I think uh, in the end, because she's never going to get rid of the circlet completely at this point. And it's also being kind of developed as its own character. So I do think that going forward, she's going to incorporate it more and more. And it's going to change her. But I am really just looking forward to that it, it will be very interesting as to the as to the race change that's very interesting i we had no idea that was a thing before now that uh normal not normal that other races other than like um lizard folk and what's the other one um lizard folk and goblins oh, yeah could really change their race like that, basically. And so it, it's very, very cool to see this. I, I, I'm i surprised we haven't heard about it before, but uh, it's going to be great. It, it's I mean, going to be great to see more of it. Aaron also, oh, yeah, got, the yeah, right. so Aaron also got the opportunity to change her race. Um, Wasn't that more like a... Uh, not a non-permanent skill, like. Um, anyways, but yeah, we have seen a practice that we saw it with the flower girl and Naga. Yeah, we did, but those were more like horror ranks, which are a bit different. But yeah. Thank you, Mr. Wiggles. Brack Giraffe says we saw it in red classes with the flower girl and Naga. Surprised to see it here, though. 
Red Ink Will, Larry, uh, go ahead. Oh, the flower girl. Yeah. Uh, um, I read all the skills, and I thought she got a lot of skills for level 40, um, especially with the race change, she got even more skills. I think she got, like, five skills. Um, she got, like, flash, she got flash freeze. She got, like, some blizzard skills. She got greater frost resistance. She got summon frost elemental. And um, for when she did a race change, she got even more stuff. I think she might have get, even got another skill. I was trying to find this, trying to find what was the big skill that she got. Um, I couldn't really find like a super skill. Maybe it was summon frost elemental. I, I uh, posted it in uh, in the ACD reaction. All of the skills. Okay, let me check. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meta magic. Yes, yeah, meta magic elemental variation. Yeah, that's the one I forgot. Magic freeze. Oh, she could freeze magic. Maybe that's the big skill. Uh, icy flesh. Um, nature's passage. Snow wraith and freezing gust. Yeah, I, I just think it's really interesting. I also wanted to mention before it's not recorded anymore. We finally find out, found out why Rabbit Eater couldn't become a hero. It was not because he didn't meet the the criteria from within himself, or that he was a goblin. It was that there's no. There was no prophecy for a hero to appear, and that's why he didn't get it. So we found that out. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Kind of true. Yeah. Sam Mu says, on the race change, as I understand that the elementalist thing would happen to all, for other races. Yeah, it was mentioned by Sarah. It happens to everybody if they go to the elemental uh, stuff. But uh, uh, it's strange that uh, Amaris is not fully changed because of her lightning skills. As Ahalis says, the demons will have had race changes from exposure to the magical radiation and actual radiation. Well, actually, that's true. I'm not even sure that she didn't get a ra that she isn't uh, the the archmage that she hasn't got another that she is still just a half elf. Maybe she already got her race change and we just don't know about it because the things she can do that's even for an archmage it's uh, a bit much maybe. You mean emirates? Yes, yes, maybe she got a race change and we just don't know it. Ah, yeah, probably. But I mean, it's, but it's, it's not, so, oh, maybe you can't see it. Maybe it's just like min minimum physical changes. Mm -hmm. probably. Yes. Any, uh, any more um, thoughts about uh, Syria? And then we'll move on to the final question about Pisces, new undead. All right, so we move on. Uh, uh, can you post the question? I yeah, have... yeah, I will. Yeah. No problem. Oh, Pisces new and dead looks looked like Aaron. People are being judgy. Thoughts? Well. <laughs> It's well, you good know. that they're being judgy. <laughs> it's but, creepy. Well, no, frankly, I like it. And it, I don't think it's creepy at all because Aaron was the first one who believed in him. Aaron was the first one. I she, know. She saved him and all kind of things. And, uh, and you know, and, and when she was depressed about, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what the two goblin dead after like volume five, he was the one who made her laugh. Uh, in the uh, in the end and stuff, so uh, I think uh, yeah, well maybe it's uh, maybe it's it it can be seen like creepy, but I think it's like an homage of uh, or an admiration yeah uh, of of some kind, but uh, he should really change it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know how it meant how it meant to be. Obviously, it's it's sweet and. Aaron means a lot to Pisces. I still believe that uh, the inn is 
a home for him and for many others, not just an inn, but an actual home. And it's it's nice and sweet and but still it's a bit creepy. <laughs> but after 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 all, the horns are Erin's team, right? That's true. That's uh, true. Brack Giraffe says he was thinking about something strong enough to save him. She is the biggest, scariest monster he knows. Yeah, that's also true. <laughs> uh, Red Ink Will, go ahead. Yeah, the reason people are being judgy is because the bone Aaron was naked. <laughs> and she hadn't been able to throw on clothes yet. That's, uh... that's why. That's why people are being judgy. It's just like I... Pisces. Pisces pictured a naked Aaron and made her <laughs> in bones. <laughs> That's why people are being judgy. <laughs> I mean, could you I even think... tell that somebody is like somebody if they're just bones? Yeah. How I mean... how does she even remotely look like Aaron if if it's just bones? It's bone nipples, you know. <laughs> and I'm out of bone nipples. That's the point where I am out. <laughs> I, I, I think she was carrying a pen. <laughs> uh, yes. But, uh, I mean, I mean, I don't think he imagined Erin naked as much as he just trying to create her form. Because, I mean, like, skeletons, not like they have clothes on. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think it was innocent from his... My, uh, there's no yeah. hair, there's no... How could you even tell that that thing looks like Aaron if it's just... I mean, maybe the height, the structure, but even if you just create the structure of a person, if it's just a skeleton, how could they... I, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. I don't know either, quite <laughs> frankly. Uh, Red Inkwill, are you done? <laughs> yes. I, I right. think that we'll... it's largely innocent. When she's summoned, she'll put on clothes and then it will no longer be such a problem. I just think it was funny because, like, he did it in public in front of, like, a hundred other people. <laughs> <laughs> both times, both times he did that. <laughs> so <laughs> this was really fucking funny. <laughs> like uh, all the other necromancers do it in private. They give them clothes, you know. <laughs> it's just, just really funny. <laughs> uh. Um. All right. Kenya says it might be that uh, his emotional closeness to his undead makes them stronger. It might have a relation was when he said he liked that his skeletons had character. And Aaron is probably emotionally the most important person to him right now. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Samu? Go ahead. Yeah, I, f I think what, what I thought about a lot is less about Pisces' mind or whatever he was thinking. If it was innocent or not so innocent, it was more like how does Aaron react to it and how does their relationship change? And I'm like, I'm a little bit on the fence again about is that if Aaron sees that undead, does she think of it as a positive thing and their relationship doesn't change or does, and, and she maybe gets some self-worth from it, which she really needs right now, or is it, does it have the opposite effect that she sees someone putting her on a pedestal again in in a in a way and she's not sure if she can live up to those uh, expectations and that's like i i would be interested in how this is going to be resolved and yeah or maybe it's just a funny thing to her, then it's fine as well. But I think there's some emotional things in their relationship that needs some working out, not just from Pisces' side, but Aaron's as well. I think her first reaction would be, Ew, Pisces! And then when she knows what that means, and when she learns about why, she would be cool with it. But first, it would be ew. 
I yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I'm more interested to know more about the death door that uh, Pisces has created by altering the spell. Uh, I uh, thought it was a yeah. very interesting development. At least, uh, at least like with him and he is free form casting. That was amazing. I, I didn't think he was going to do that. Like, he summoned, like, uh, an elemental door to death, and evidently there's only a few of them on the world, and he just did it randomly by altering a tier one skill. That was amazing. I mean, yeah. he took out the control segment of a spell. What, what, what did he think would happen when he take, takes out a control segment of a spell? Well, he didn't uh, consider it will summon an undead giant. <laughs> Ah, I see. Yes. Um, all right, so that's uh, all for the questions. Any final thoughts? Final thoughts? I'm excited where this is going. To be honest, I like the chapter, but my goodness, I want to go finally go back to Eren. I, I can't take it anymore. Uh, so I hope we don't make too many side tours. I mean, we well, still have to find out what's going on with Kissinger and how he's going to catch up now. But I just finally want to go back to Eren. My goodness. Frankly, I want the, the Rex side story to be wrapped up as soon as possible. Her and, uh, and Marsha's. Because, you know, uh, getting that kind of cliffhanger and going back in time and, and stuff. So it's a bit... Uh, yeah. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, Dark Time says, Pisces forgot that a good experiment needs a control. Yeah, that's true. Mystical Pi says, I also want to see more Eren, but Pirate took us right to the edge of the climax of the Rags Marsha arc and ended it. Yes. True. Any more thoughts before I end the recording? All right. Thank you all for participating.